everyone, my name is Kim and I work on the Free Surfer team and today I'll be giving you a overview of the subcortical neuroanatomical structures in the human brain. So this beautiful volume that I've got loaded here is a uh, part of a pack, a paper that was published by one of our collaborators, Dr. Brian Edlow um, et al. And it is an ex vivo scan uh, of a human brain. And it's got very beautiful uh, resolution. So I'm using that today to give you a high resolution tour through the human brain. So we're going to be looking at some of the main structures in uh, the subcortical region of the brain. Uh, so the first structure that I'd like to point out to you here is the caudate, which is part of the striatum um, and, and part of also the basal ganglia in the brain. Uh, another structure that's visible, well, another ventricle that's visible here is the lateral ventricle. Um, and this entire region uh, c makes up the internal capsule of the brain. So we are going to scroll in the... Ooh, first I should tell you that the plane that we're looking at here is corotal. Um, and in radiological, uh, when you're viewing volumes in radiology, uh, the brain is usually viewed as if you are looking at the patient. So, as you can see, uh, this is the left hemisphere, uh, denoted here by the little L on the right. Um, that's uh, something to note that the brain is uh, kind of reversed to how you would typically ex expect it to be if you were thinking this brain were you. Um, so this is the left hemisphere, and then this is the right hemisphere. Right, so we're going to scroll in the posterior direction of the brain, and I'm going to point out some structures to you. Um, so yeah, as we scroll along here, we can see the caudate is getting a little bigger, and we can see the putamen is starting to... Uh, show as well, moving in the posterior direction. Uh, so this is the putamen coming into view, the caudate's getting bigger. Um, now as the striatum fully develops here, uh, we start to see the nucleus accumbens right here. And now I'm going to keep scrolling in the posterior direction. So we see the optic nerve right here. And as I keep scrolling, I will also point out the optic chiasm is beginning to form here. So anything anterior of the optic chiasm is called the optic nerve, and then posterior to the optic chiasm is called the optic tract. And we'll see that in a bit. So now we're starting to see uh, the globus pallidus come in here in the internal capsule. We've still got the putamen here, the nucleus accumbens, and the caudate is starting to uh, get smaller. We've still got the lateral ventricle visible here. So now we're starting to see some commissures. So we've got the corpus callosum right here, which is that main highway between the, the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, we're starting to see, this is not a commissure, but this is the septum pellucidum, which is a, a membrane that separates the two hemispheres and the two ventricles between the hemispheres. Um, we've got the anterior commissure right here on both sides of the brain, and I'll keep scrolling. OK, 
Okay, so now we're seeing some colostrum right here. These tiny wisps right here. And we're uh, now seeing the optic tract. So now the fornix, another commissure, has come into view. So now we talked about the globus pallidus earlier. Uh, now we can differentiate between the globus pallidus externa, which is a structure right here, and the globus pallidus interna. We're also starting to see the hypothalamus right here. And we're uh, starting to see the choroid plexus, which is found within the lateral ventricles of the brain. Now, continuing along our tour of the brain, we're starting to see parts of the limbic system. So this is the medial temporal lobe, the one of the memory centers of the brain. Um, and we're seeing the amygdala here, this large structure here and here. Um, and as we continue to scroll, As we scroll further in the posterior view, we start to see the thalamus pop up as well. And now we can see bits of the third ventricle right down here and mammillary bodies in this inferior portion of the brain. Something I should have mentioned um, is this is the superior portion of the brain and this is the inferior portion of the brain and then towards the cortex is the lateral portion of the brain and closer towards the center of the brain is called the medial portion of the brain so those are just some common terms of direction that come up when talking about the brain and its different orientations so now as I continue to go posterior we start to see the head of the hippocampus pop up right here. The amygdala has gotten quite small on this hemisphere, still present on this hemisphere, um, just due to the orientation of the two hemispheres. So now we've got the fully formed head of the hippocampus here on the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And we've still got the butamen, we've got the globus pallidus, we've got the thalamus, um, and same on the other side, we've got the butamen, globus pallidus. Uh, we've also still got the corpus callosum present here and the fornix as, as well as the thalamus. Now we have the red nucleus that's come into view in both hemispheres, in the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. We've also got the subthalamic nucleus as well as the substantia nigra in the left hemisphere and right hemisphere.
we're starting to see the brain stem as well. I won't go too much into the different structures of the brain stem in this video, but perhaps in another. So now we're starting to see the end of the putamen. It's been with us for a while. And the hippocampus is developed into another shape. And this is called the body of the hippocampus. And we've still got brain stem that's come into full view here. We still have the red nucleus present and the thalamus present. Uh, as well as the corpus callosum, the ventricle, and the fornix. Now we can see the cerebra aqueduct, which is this tiny little hole here, part of the ventricular system, and surrounding the cerebral aqueduct is the PAG, or the periaqueductal gray. That is a mouthful. So we've still got the thalamus here with us. We've still got the hippocampus. It's starting to, we're starting to come into the tail end of the hippocampus. Now we can follow the fornix as well. Uh, if you notice, the fornix has been with us for quite some time, and it takes on uh, a, very, a lot of shapes, different shapes in the brain as we move from the anterior to the posterior section of the brain. Also, you notice the thalamus has changed shape a bit as we move into the more posterior portions of the brain, um, the hippocampus is starting to leave and change shape as well. Okay, so something we can spot here is the superior colliculus and hopefully as we go in the more posterior direction I can point out nicely for you the inferior colliculus. The superior colliculus has this nice kind of heart shape which is pretty easy to spot. Okay, if you can imagine a little bit, uh, this is the inferior colliculus, just inferior to the superior colliculus right here. And we've still got brainstem with us as well, and we're starting to see the cerebellum poke through as we move further in the posterior section of the brain. We see the thalamus is starting to leave. And from here on out, we've kind of uh, talked about a lot of the subcortical structures in the brain. Um, which was the goal of our video today. So I hope you enjoyed my tour of the brain, and I hope you found this useful. Uh, thank you.